So the podcasts that are most downloaded on the Hack My Age podcast are the ones that discuss peptides. So today you're in for a, another treat with one of my favorite guests and biohacking bestie, Natalie Nidham. Many of you who are already part of the Biohacking Menopause Facebook group and our previous discussions on Clubhouse are already familiar with Natalie and her passion for peptides. And today we're going to go discuss a, uh, like her topics of peptides for longevity. And as a woman in menopause herself, we're also going to take a little dip into her personal thoughts on peptides for issues concerning this cohort of women. But Natalie is so much more than an expert in peptides. She is a total science geek with a passion for human health. And she's a certified holistic nutritionist and Aperon Academy epigenetic coach and a member of the first graduating class of the Bulletproof Training Institute. That's like made by the godfather of biohacking, Dave Asprey. Now, Natalie, when she was in her teens, she fought off with, she was fighting with her own ongoing health and digestive issues. And through a lot of education, trial and error and biohacking, she now knew how to tap into her own body's healing and repair mechanisms. And she now shares her knowledge to help us all take control of our health. Natalie also has a podcast, if you didn't know already, um, and you've got to listen to it. It's called Biohacking Superhuman Performance, which is now rated as a top 100 podcast in the US and Canada in its category. Actually, I did look you up, Natalie. Um, you are in the top 1% of all podcasts in the world. That's pretty amazing. So wow. she's, she's been interviewing some of the most brilliant minds in the biohacking space and along the way, gaining massive amounts of knowledge from each and every one of these experts. And she also has a really active Facebook page called Optimizing Superhuman Performance, as well as a very cool private group on Mighty Networks and a very comprehensive peptide program that teaches us everything we need to know about peptides and more. And I'll make links to all of these in the show notes. Now, before we start, we have to tell you that Natalie Ninham is not a doctor and none of the information in this podcast should be taken as medical advice. So go see your own medical practitioner with that. So now without further ado, let's meet Natalie Ninham. Welcome. Thank you so much, Zora. Thanks for all that. I, you know that I'm, you're my favorite podcaster. So it was like, <laughs> um, it's an honor to be here. I really um, appreciate the opportunity and I'm looking forward to the discussion because we always have great chats. <laughs> yeah. And you're always teaching me something new about peptides and, and I'm so excited to dive into this, but not everyone knows what a peptide is. So just briefly explain like what is a peptide and then the different ways you can maybe take them and if any form is better than another, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So that's a really good question. It's a good place to start because we're going to talk about, I think today we're most likely going to talk about a subcategory of peptides called bioregulators. And we may talk about the other peptides as well. So basically, what is a peptide? A peptide is a short protein. It's it's usually 50 amino acids or less. And it's it's a fragment of a naturally occurring sub protein in the human body. So as a result, we have receptors on our cells that know these compounds, respond to these compounds, and then act on them. Um, the most famous peptide that almost everybody's heard of is insulin, mm. interestingly enough, right? Yeah. And so insulin is naturally produced by the pancreas, but then when people become diabetic, they don't make enough insulin. It's actually more complicated than this. Very often they become very insulin resistant, but anyway. And one of the strategies that conventional medicine uses is to supplement insulin, to give allow the person to reintroduce insulin from the outside into the body to kind of make up for what the pancreas isn't producing to help glucose get into the cells. Um, from a functional perspective, it's a much more complex, nuanced discussion, which we won't get into today, but that's just to give you an idea of what a peptide is. So we have the longer chain peptides and longer chain peptides are generally 50 amino acids or less in length. The subcategory of peptides that I think we're going to talk about quite a bit today are bioregulator peptides. And those peptides are only two to four amino acids long. So amino acids are the tiniest of the little building block protein you can possibly get. And so when you put two to or four together, it's shockingly little. What's interesting about these 
is because of their size and because of their polarity, they're able to cross the cellular membrane, get into the nucleus of the cell, and what's in the nucleus of your cell, but your, your DNA. And mm. they're able to bind to specific sites on the DNA and upregulate the production of very specific proteins. So this is essentially the description of an epigenetic switch, right? Epigenetics is something coming in from the outside, affecting the expression of your DNA. So they directly, and yeah, sorry. Yeah, just to just interrupt you for a second until I understood. So the longer chain amino acids, little, you know, I guess larger peptides do not get into the DNA and cannot change, make those epigenetic changes? So that's a really good question. So it turns out that some of those peptides can influence the expression of certain genes. I, you know, back in the day, I would have said, nope, they can't get into the nucleus, but somehow those peptides do influence genetic expression in certain cases. Um, like BPC-157, which is body protective compound 157. It's a fairly long by peptide standards. Peptide, I think it's 19 amino acids, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, so it doesn't actually, I don't know that it gets into the nucleus, but it can affect gene expression. So, you know, peptides are very interesting compounds, but the bioregulator only works by affecting DNA expression. It only works and it is specific. Now, it is fairly specific to tissues, organs, and certain systems. So, for example, what I mean by that is we have the pineal bioregulator, which affects the pineal gland and it originates in the pineal gland, right? It's made. So, when we think about bioregulator peptides, our bodies make them. And there's there's 40 years of research behind these compounds. And that 40 years of research is the body of work of a doctor and researcher by the name of Vladimir Kavinson. And Vladimir Kavinson has done a ton of animal and human trials using bioregulator peptides. Now that body of work is massive. A lot of it is still in Russian. So people are still working hard to try and, um, and, and get it um, translated. Yeah. But but I would say that for people, you know, for the geeks in the audience or the nerds in the audience who are familiar with PubMed, if you go onto PubMed and you type in his name, it will you will be blown away by the number of papers and um, studies and a lot of rev like reviews that come up with his name on it. And he's, of course, working with a whole team of people. Um, and there's actually scientists in the Ukraine that he's worked with, you know, like it's and Croatia, like that body of work comes from that part of the world. Mm. Um, and so, so we have, bio sorry, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. So keep going. I just want to make sure under people understand so the bioregulator peptides are short chain amino acids and they go into, they can get into the, the, the DNA and, and the nucleus, whereas the other ones, maybe, maybe not. Um, they're the, the one difference I understand as well. Well, actually are, are the longer chain amino acids also targeted towards certain organs? Cause you started talking about the pineal gland. Not so much. Not so much. So, so for example, in bioregulator land, we have about 21 bioregulators that are regu red readily available to us. And so when you look for them, you will find a bioregulator for the heart, a bioregulator for the kidney. You'll have a bioregulator for lungs, for the pancreas, for the liver, for blood vessels, for ovaries, for the adrenal glands, for the thyroid, for the central nervous system and the brain. Um, what else? I'm not at 21 yet. There's one for muscle, one for bone marrow. Uh, there's testes, there's prostate, there's ovaries, which I may have already said. Anyway, so you get the idea. So they're very specific. Whereas with the longer chain, oh, the thymus gland, how could I forget? So the longer chain peptides, the longer chain peptides, can you not hear? The brain, no, the brain, she meant the brain. Yeah, the brain, exactly. The central nervous system. So, um, so the longer chain peptides, Peptides, which you may or may not have heard of you guys. And it's a bit of an alphabet soup. Like nomenclature of these compounds is a bit of a nightmare, right? On the bioregulator side, it's a little bit like going shopping at Ikea. And to make things even worse, each peptide, each bioregulator has about three different names, depending on whether it's the synthetic form of the bioregulator or the actual extract from the, the organ or the tissue or the gland 
which we now get them from animals, right? We get them from, from bovine sources, sometimes from sheep. Uh, it depends on, on the bioregulator. The short chain peptides, so I mean the longer chain peptides like the BPC-157, the thymosin alpha-1, thymosin beta-4, this is the alphabet soup of peptide world, right? And these are fragments of naturally occurring proteins and they have receptors on cells typically. So what's, what's really interesting is thymosin alpha-1, which is a thymus peptide. So it comes from the thymus gland. It's an immune system peptide. If you look at thymus and alpha one at the, and we're getting a little into the weeds here. I think we're going to have to pull back in a minute, but I'll just finish with this one thought. And then I'm going to let you ask a better question to guide me out of the weeds. Um, <laughs> but if you look at the, at the molecule that is thymus and alpha one embedded in thymus and alpha one is the sequence of a bioregulator that is also an immune bioregulator. Oh, interesting. It's almost like getting, so two, you're getting a repeat in the, in the you're other getting one. a double hit. Yeah. Yeah. So it depends if the bodies, you know, what I don't know is does the bodies and, and what we have are these enzymes that will cleave, they'll break things up. Right. So what's interesting of the bioregulators is they're naturally occurring in food and people will say, well, if you take a bioregulator, cause you can take a bioregulator orally, won't it just get digested and broken up into single amino acids in the gut and then get absorbed that way? Well, the way that Kevinson explains it is this is part of the body system and the way that the proteins come and there's those bioregulators embedded, where a protein gets broken up has to do with, with cleavage sites on either side of it, right? So think of it as a unit with almost like um, on, on, from one, on one end and on the other end, you have a specific structure that lends itself to being broken up by a protein digesting enzyme. And so it, it ends up getting, the protein gets broken down, but that little sequence gets left intact and it's small enough to then be absorbed through the gut and get into the bloodstream and go off and do its thing. Okay. So what people want deep in the weeds yeah. right now, people. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. And if you <laughs> like the deep in, in the wood stuff, I, you got to go listen to Natalie's podcast as well as understand more about peptides in, in her Mighty Networks group or or the program. I mean, that's where you really get into detail, but for people who not really understand, you know, don't understand all of the, all of this, this extra mumbo jumbo for them, they just need to know that these are naturally occurring um, molecules in the body. Bioregulators are a subcategory of peptides that mm -hmm. bioregulators is my understanding are only taken as a supplement orally but the other ones come as, um, as like BBC exactly. 157 have both oral and injectable or sometimes sprays. So, yeah. so let me stop you there. Yeah. So the, the bioregulators, the interesting thing about them is the oral bioregulator that is the natural extract is yeah. considered a nutritional supplement. Yes. Right. But the bio, but there is, a, but bioregulators also can be taken as a synthetic bioregulators. So the synthetic bioregulator means that they've, so in that, in that extract from the organ, you're going to get bioregulator and you're also going to get a lot of the, um, a lot of the, what's the word I'm looking for? Basically support, you're, you're going to get other compounds from the organ as well as the bioregulator. It's a little bit like a desiccated organ supplement, mm -hmm. but not quite. It's more refined than that because the hallmark of the bioregulator is that it it never boosts function, it modulates function. It always looking to bring the body back to homeostasis. Whereas with an or a desiccated organ like thyroid, you can't necessarily take that if you're if you're hyperthyroid because it'll put you into overdrive. With the bioregulator, it won't. You can use the bioregulator whether you're hypo or hyperthyroid. Think of it as, and this is a gross oversimplification, as it's trying to basically restore function to the thyroid at, to bring it to normal. Mm -hmm. So it'll bring it, if it's too high, it'll bring it down. If it's too low, it'll bring it up. So it's almost like it's rebuilding the thyroid gland. Sounds like an adaptogen. Almost, almost like an, it, it's the same concept, right? Um, but what I was saying is the synthetic bioregulator, which now what they've done is they've looked at those, those amino acid sequences in the bioregulator that really, I mean, cofactors was the word I was looking for earlier, actually, 
but um, th they can sometimes isolate that exact amino acid chain that that is responsible for many of the effects of a certain bioregulator. Those can be reproduced synthetically in a lab, and they can be reintroduced into the body either as a subcutaneous injection mm. or as a sublingual spray. Or there's now some some labs that are making them as a trans as transdermal drops. Okay. Um, that's interesting. Yeah. Yes. So so that's on the bioregulator front. On the peptide front, because the bigger the longer chain peptides, on that front, because you're dealing with larger molecules, in that case, very often for most of them, they shouldn't be taken orally because they will be digested, right? So for the most part, they need to be reintroduced by subcutaneous injection. Sometimes they can be used intranasally. Sometimes you mentioned BPC-157. It's like, it's the Swiss army knife of the peptide world. It has so many different applications, but it can be used by subcutaneous injection. It can be taken as an oral supplement. It can be compounded into eye drops. It can be compounded into a... Um, an ointment or a liquid to address topical like burns, cuts, wounds. Um, it can be used in a multitude of different ways. So there's something about this BPC-157 that makes it incredibly versatile. But before I go on, I think one thing that's important to share with the audience is that for the most part, very few of these are approved for human use, particularly in the U.S., right? Um, there are a lot of people using them. There are a lot of medical doctors in the functional space who are prescribing these and using these for their patients, but know that as far as conventional medicine is concerned, as far as the FDA is concerned, and this is starting to become a problem, they do not consider these compounds as intended for human use at this time. In, You're talking in about of, BPC-157 or bioregulators or what? I think they would probably say both. The thing with the bioregulators, when it comes to the oral supplement, which is the extract of the organ, because it's classified as a nutritional supplement, I think that's a little bit of a loophole. But when you get into the synthetic ones, they would be, yeah, no, forget it. That's that's a chemical compound. We have not tested it properly and we do not endorse its use. Now, when you look at something like thymus and alpha-1, which is that thymus peptide that helps the immune system to come back into balance. Um, it's approved as a drug in about 30 or 40 countries around the world. And I know that a lot of your listeners live in Europe on, and in other countries as well as the U.S. In those countries, it's actually a medication. In the U.S., it's been granted orphan drug status, but only for hep B and C. Yet in the meantime, we know that it is for a lot of people who have autoimmune issues, it's, it's the thing that keeps them functioning. It was shown in clinical trials to be incredibly helpful during the COVID pandemic. Amazing. Um, yeah. They tested it. They actually tested it in China in hospitals and were able to show that it was incredibly powerful. Um, Great. It, yeah, it's it's one of those things. I think that a lot of people are interested in in learning more about peptides, and there and like you said, there's a whole Pandora's box that that needs to be open. We're really just covering the basics here, and I think people understand now. Okay, peptides, we can take them orally, we can inject them sublingual creams. There's tons of ways we can take them. So uh, let's talk a little bit about the woman who's listening to this podcast and she's yeah. interested in longevity and biohacking, aging well. And like, we're in this second chapter of our lives and we can literally witness this aging process on our faces mm -hmm. and our bodies and our minds. And, and we hear a lot about the peptides and, and we understand that, okay, hey, they may help us with some of the concerns that we have, like maybe thinning hair or our bodies changing shapes or losing our eyesight. And uh, dealing with gut issues. There's just so many out there uh, when we hit this sort of this menopause transition. What would be your three favorite peptides for any of these issues? Well, that's really hard. I know, um, I know. <laughs> it's like a terrible um, question. I didn't ask you just one. I said three. I, well, yeah, I mean, that's very generous of you. Um, <laughs> Um, I, th so can I get, can I talk about two, the, the two categories? Can I get six? Yes. <laughs> All right. So in the longer chain peptides. And so again, ladies, if you're going to go there, know that you're treading in 
in territory that is not going, you're, you're going to need to speak to a functional medicine practitioner. And there are an increasing number of them who are familiar with and using these compounds in their practice. So I encourage you to seek out one of these people. But Having said that, Zora mentioned gut health issues, and we know that leaky gut and, you know, the whole GI tract at all stages of life is challenged, but the older we get, the more challenged it gets. And frankly, in the world that we live in right now, it's almost like you need to do regular maintenance to keep it going. Like you get your gut, you know, one thing that I think we sometimes forget is that health is a continuum. We keep changing. And because we live in a world with so many stresses and strains, whether it's stress, actually, whether it's EMFs, whether it's exposure to toxins, what, like, I mean, I'm in Toronto right now. We can't even see the sky today because there's so much smoke around, right? So we're just, we're kind of living in a world where our bodies are constantly having to deal with a lot of external stressors coming in. So if we talk about the gut, BPC-157 is the champion of gut health. On its own, it can help to heal the gut. Now, it can be combined with other peptides to augment that. But if I had to pick one peptide for gut health, it would be BPC-157. And the nice thing about BPC is it can be used orally quite effectively for the gut. The other interesting thing about BPC is it also has some benefits for the brain. So it's not going to necessarily balance your hormones. And whenever we're talking about using a peptide, let me impress this upon you. It's always important to, to ask the question, what am I trying to correct? You're not trying to correct my hair is falling out. You're not trying, I mean, you are trying to correct that, but you need to understand why is my hair falling out? Is my hair falling out because I'm not eating enough protein? Or is my hair maybe falling out because I'm eating the protein, but I'm not able to digest it properly and absorb it, right? There, or um, is my hair falling out because I've got some kind of inflammation going on, or there's some kind of problem with the microbiome in my scalp? Like it can be a lot and it can be hormonal. So it can be a lot of different things. So when people ask me, can I use a peptide for name the symptom? My answer is always going to be, do we understand why this symptom is happening? Because it's only when we understand why the symptom is happening that we can start to think about, is it an immune issue? Should we be using thymus and alpha-1 to help to bring up the innate immune system? Because it might be something autoimmune that's going on. So I would say that thymus and alpha-1, I provided my own nice little segue, would be contestant. Hold on a second. Sec yeah. yeah. Hold on a second. Because <laughs> if anybody's listening, uh, to, uh, that likes to know more about the gut and peptides for the gut, we did a whole podcast. If you remember on gut health and peptides. So strongly, I put a link to that in the show notes too. Okay. Amazing. <laughs> Um, and I would say since that podcast, I've learned a ton, right? So I will leave you ladies with the, the, the peptides that are very interesting for the gut are BPC-157. There's also a peptide called KPV, which is an anti-inflammatory and antimicrobial peptide. There's another peptide called lorazotide, which, is, um, which specifically helps to seal the tight junctions in the gut. Um, you can find that trio in an oral supplement uh, by a company called Level Up Health in Australia. And if you if you go to my website and you go to my Nat Recommends page, there's a supplement section. There, there's information there with the link to the podcast I recorded with Kyle. I actually should really Perfect. introduce him to you, Zora, because he does amazing stuff. Yes. Um, and um, so... So that's the BPC with the KPB, the lorazotide. There's another peptide called VIP, which is also great for the gut. So, you know, we start with BPC-157, but know that there's an array of peptides that can be helpful. The second peptide in the longer chain peptides was is thymosin alpha-1. So thymosin alpha-1 originates, it's one of the peptides made by the thymus gland. And what it does specifically is it's very anti-inflammatory and it also increases the, the, the activity of the innate immune system, which is very often quite depressed with respect to the in, in part of the immune system that deals with the outside, the Th2. So we have Th1 and Th2, it brings up Th1. So in addition to being anti-inflammatory, so 
very often with thymosin alpha one, we will see it just, it, it's kind of like this salve, right? For example, we, you know, Dr. Elizabeth Yurth, who I know you know very well, when I interviewed her a couple of years ago when she was talking about when she's dealing with uh, patients of hers because she's a medical doctor so she has patients um when she's dealing with patients who have a lot of weight to lose very often before she gets them started on a weight loss program and whatever they're doing she'll have them do about a month of this thymosin alpha one peptide just to help to bring down inflammation and to rebalance the immune system because the immune system is involved in our body's ability to release weight Hmm. Interesting. Right? Yeah. I wonder how many people made that connection, immune, immune system and weight loss. Well, that's Joel Green's entire body of work, mm. right? Is his, his, his book, The Immunity Code, literally addresses weight loss, like fat loss through the lens of the immune system, which is we part of what is so brilliant about his work. Okay, we'll have um, to have a link to that too in the show notes. I, I hope he really only paper. lives in the weeds, though. Just so to be clear, like he's yeah. brilliant. <laughs> he's brilliant, and he lives in the weeds. Um, but he does a really good job of communicating to people. So, anyway, so we have BPC one five seven. We have thymus and alpha one. I might leave it there. Okay, if we go over to the bioregulators, we now have an opportunity to look at postmenopause we what we want to do is look at what what is postmenopause or menopause what are the systems that are being most affected so the bioregulator that we always start with is the pineal gland bioregulator and the reason for that is because it controls it modulates um it it touches every system in the body right it touches immunity it touches the brain it is very powerful for circadian rhythm, right? So it can, it, it can help to reestablish your circadian rhythm. It normalizes melatonin production. So in elderly adults, it was shown to bring melatonin levels back up to that of, a, say, a 40-year-old. Cool. Right? That's amazing. Now, what's interesting about melatonin, and you know as well, you know very well, is that melatonin is not just for sleep. Melatonin is the most powerful antioxidant in our body. It also has very powerful anti-cancer. Well, what's interesting about epitalon or pineal, the pineal bioregulator is that it has anti-tumor activity, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So now, you know, as we're aging as women, what are we starting to think about, right? We're starting to think about our sleep is going to hell in a handbasket. We've got to modulate that. We've got to get that normalized. So that circadian cycle and melatonin production, our chances of certain cancers start to go up as well. So anything that can help to mitigate that is going to be incredibly helpful to us. The other thing that the pineal gland bioregulator does is it activates an enzyme called telomerase. And telomerase helps to maintain the length of telomeres, which is those shoelaces on the ends of your, of your DNA that as every time your DNA replicates, you lose a little bit of that telomere. And once the telomere gets too short, the DNA can no longer replicate. So it can also help to, re to restore and to normalize. Okay, so it's always normalized because we don't want our telomeres to be a mile long because now our chance of cancer goes up. So yeah. there's in nature, in our bodies, we're always looking to hit the sweet spot, right? Now it's next superpower, the the epitalon, the pineal gland bioregulator, is that it is the master endocrine regulator. It's the conductor of the whole endocrine system. So that's the system that man regulates your hormones, all of them. Mm. So anything that's going to do that from a top-down approach is going to be incredibly helpful and useful for us as we're aging. So I, it's not one. So the, that one is the pineal gland one is, is a pitalon, right? Is that the so, one? So this is, so this is very important. So it is epitalon. So epitalon, E-P-I-T-A-L-O-N, sometimes with an H between the T and the O, just to make things a little more confusing. Um, <laughs> so that is the synthetic form of epithalamin mm -hmm. or endolutin. Remember I told you they all have multiple names. Epithalamin is the actual extract of the pineal gland that has been prepared for an intramuscular injection. That is the most powerful form of this bioregulator. 
and it's literally pretty much only available in Russia. Hmm. So to be clear, epithalamin is, is, is the mama, if you will. Endolutin is the trademark name for the extract of the pineal gland that has been prepared for oral use. So we take that as a capsule. It's not quite as strong as epithalamin, but it's still very powerful. Then epitalon is the synthetic form. So it's just the amino acid. So if let's say someone is a vegan and says, I will not touch any product that is taken from an animal's body, then for you, epitalon will be what is most acceptable to you. It is the synthetic form of that little peptide chain in found in epithalamin or endolutin that hits the money mark with the pineal gland. And that, but that would be less effective than say the injectable one or. So I don't know that it would be less effective. The party line out of Russia is that the synthetics are faster acting, but maybe the effects don't last quite as long. Mm -hmm. And they're also really useful for people who have a very, very sensitive system, like who have got a lot of autoimmune issues. For those people, the synthetic might actually be a better entry into the use of bioregulators versus the ones, all the cofactors and stuff. So there's maybe a little bit more for somebody to react to in there. In Kavinson's lectures, he basically says they've never seen bad reactions. What I will tell you is from my community of, you know, which has now gotten really big, we have four years of people using and coming back and talking about these things is that sometimes we come across people that have very, very, they're hypersensitive. Their immune system is on hypervigilant alert. And for them, sometimes they have to really reduce the dose of these things to tolerate them. But we see that more with the oral capsules. Hmm. Interesting. So how, how long does it, do the peptides take to work for it, it's the average per, I don't know, let's think of a woman going yeah. through menopause who wants to yeah. solve her. That's a really good question. Issue. And I have a really shitty answer for that. <laughs> Excuse my French. Um, the answer is it depends. <laughs> it depends on what else you're doing to support the system. It depends on what is the imbalance. Like, you know what I mean? Like if someone's in hormone chaos and they're not, they don't have access to anything else to help balance their hormones and they're taking epitalon it's not going to be able to do everything for you. Like it's, it's the, these bioregulators are really powerful and they're very interesting and they are an addition to a full protocol, right? So when we look at the literature on the bioregulators, there's some really interesting literature, let's say, for example, people who suffer from COPD, so chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, which is a really serious um, and degenerative kind of respiratory disease, and so they, the interesting thing about the Russians, they're like, okay, we've got this bioregulator called bronchogen, which is for the lungs, and it and it addresses the bronchioles, the bron bronchi, bronchi, right? Um, but we also have medication that can be quite effective. So here's what we're going to do: we're going to have one group of people only taking the medication, and then we're going to have a third, a second group of people taking the medication and the bioregulator. And what they found is that the people taking the medication, they got, you know, they got the results that they would have expected from the medication, but the people who took the medication and the bioregulator actually did a lot better and had longer lasting results, hmm. right? So it's, it, I, to me, the magic of the bioregulators is understanding that sometimes on their own, they can be very helpful, but very often, sometimes it's about stacking them with all the other things. And sometimes even in certain cases, with medication, mm. because we can't throw the baby out with the bathwater here. Like I know that in this space, we love to trash conventional medicine and blah, 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 but we have to acknowledge that there's really useful stuff in that toolkit. Like there's, there's things, frankly, that have, it's what's enabled us to live long enough to care about how well we age, right? Like 50, 60, 70 years ago, you just didn't want to die. Mm -hmm. Now we know we're not going to die, but now we're really worried about what our last 30 years on earth is going to look like. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's actually, it coincides a lot with Dr. Walter Longo's work in, in that he's shown that say the, you know, fasting, for example, which he loves to research. And yeah. when he did the same studies, well, similar studies where you have people doing the chemo, then the pe people taking the chemo with the fasting and they 100%. had better results. Uh, yeah. 
100. And, and I would say fasting is a critical piece of the equation, right? Using a good senolytic formula is another critical piece of the equation. Like the, the, I feel like one of the mistakes that we make in our world right now, and it's not, it's, it's not our fault, but we're getting bombarded with this does this amazing, like, you know, this urolithin A is amazing for mitophagy and spermidine is amazing for something else. And this supplement is amazing for something else. And so we start adding and adding and adding and adding. What we forget is what can we take away? Mm -hmm. right? What do we need to remove? And fasting is a huge piece of this because when we fast, we get rid of those old cells. Now, spermidine and, and urolithin A, of course, they also drive mitophagy and autophagy, but sometimes just not doing can be more powerful than doing yet another thing, right? So anyway, going on with our menopausal lady, so if she only had one bioregulator, I would probably pick the pineal gland bioregulator, but I can sit here and make an argument for the adrenal bioregulator because so many of us need support for our adrenal glands, the thyroid bioregulator, because so many of us need support for our thyroid gland, which is a part of that, you know, kind of chaos that hits us as we're transitioning through menopause, like everything starts to go. It's almost like moving through menopause, all those, it's like all the, the withdrawals you've made out of the bank the bank's calling in the loan, right? <laughs> so if we haven't built that resilience back into the system, we end up feeling really depleted and things start to go sideways in a million different ways. But there's an ovarian bioregulator that I do believe has some really great benefits, particularly for women in perimenopause, right? So as you're transitioning, it's not like we're going to stop menopause, but if we take the pineal, gl bio the pineal gland bioregulator and pair it with the ovarian bioregulator, they seem to work together really nicely. Mm. Um, and, you know, for a woman who's concerned about ca her cardiovascular health, maybe there's a history in her family, maybe her doctor has told her that she's got some issues, then I would say the blood vessel bioregulator and the heart bioregulator are going to be super important, right? But the blood vessel bioregulator, if you, if you said, Nat, you only get three, it would be the pineal gland, the thymus gland for immunity, and then the blood vessel, right? If we can yeah. get nutrients to the cell and remove waste products, if we can give a boost to our immune system, and if we can get that master control kind of re-regulated a little bit, we've done a lot of work here. And we can now move forward with our positive lifestyle, right? Um, by sleeping, focusing on sleep, which the pineal gland bioregulator may help with but focusing on sleep, focusing on all the things that bring us to good sleep, right? So those, yeah. And and so much more, like you said, when it's the pineal gland and in the pineal bioregulator, it does so much more than just work on your sleep. So I think those are the best, I think those are the best combinations. I would have to agree with you. Uh, and I'm sure some people are wondering, are these safe? Like what's the worst that can happen? Yeah, that's a great question. So on the short, on the longer chain peptides, there's, I mean, look, it's an impossible question to answer properly because, because they're not approved for human use, because they haven't necessarily been studied as extensively as we would want. Um, everything I've seen seems to point to if they're used properly and judiciously, they seem to have more benefits than harm. But I would say, don't be cavalier about them. And I see people doing this all the time. They're like, well, I'm going to use this peptide and that peptide and that peptide. And I'm like, why? And I'm like, because I want to try them out. And I'm like, dude, you have one body. <laughs> like, I mean, you know, if there's a reason to intervene, yes. If not, then, you know, be smart about this. On the bioregulator front, the, um, the 40 years of research that Kavinson has done, if you believe his research, they're 100% safe because of this whole issue of always seeking to bring homeostasis, the body back to homeostasis. It's not boosting the body into overdrive. You are not going to become a superhuman by using bioregulators, right? You're just, you're not, what you're doing and how he describes it, which I think is a beautifully elegant description, is he talks about every organism has a 30 to 40% untapped reserve, biological reserve. So think about it as there's room in your tank. And if you think about it, we typically, 
human lifespan, generally speaking, is to 80. But, but maximum human lifespan is 120, as we understand it today. I know there's people that would be arguing with me right now, but let's just say 120. That's a 30 to 40% gap. So what we're doing is as we're losing function, we're trying to bring it back, bring it back, bring it back. So can we buy ourselves enough more time so that we make it to 120 or 100 or whatever the case may be, but maintain the function, maintain health span so that we can enjoy those years? Like, you know, there's nobody who's listening to this podcast, I, I would bet, who has any interest in living into their 90s or 100s and being stuck in a wheelchair dependent on other people for their every need, Right. I think that most of us would agree that what we're looking for is to be able to maintain a degree of independence, have our wits about us, be, be able to contribute and receive, experience joy and all of those things, like have, have, a, have capacity to live. And then we want to stay on this earth longer. When you get to the point where you're in the shell of a body, like I have a neighbor who, you know, was 97 years old, was relegated to a wheelchair, suffered agonizing pain every minute of every hour of every day. I mean, the tragedy for her is that her brain was sharp. Mm. But she checked out. Like she, in Canada, we have a program called MADE, which is medically assisted. I don't remember what the I stands for, but death. Um, and so they, she and her family contacted a medical doctor and they made plans or at a certain point for her to, to, to check out. And I remember speaking to her and she looked at me and she said, you know, I'm 97. I'm not going to get better. I suffer every minute of every hour of every day. And it's time for me to go. You know, I got tears in my eyes just thinking about it because she was a beautiful person. And she had lived a full, full life. And for her, it was her time to check out. So the challenge is that our, our medical system can keep us alive way past the time where maybe we want to be alive. So I'm not advocating for MAID. I think it's a very complex personal topic that has to be looked at by an individual and their family and, and themselves with their doctor. But all I'm saying, I guess all I'm saying is that, you know, health span is the thing that we're after over and above in a way longevity. I'm so glad you mentioned that because it's true. Sometimes people tell me, oh, you're in the biohacking and space. Oh, you just want to live to 150 and I don't want to live to 150. And I was like, well, no, it's not the point. The point is to have a long health span, not a long lifespan. I mean, that that may be the byproduct, but you want the number of years on this planet to be, to be good, good quality of life. So um, I want to move on to one topic that's a little bit outside of the peptides, but before we do... Somebody who's listening now, they want to get started on some bioregulator peptides or other peptides. It, you mentioned finding a functional medicine doctor, which you can do on the website, right? A4M.com, for yeah, example. A4M, or... For sure. I've, you know, I, I mean, you've interviewed a few on your podcast. I constantly looking for them and I interview them on my podcast as well. Like these are people who are doing some of the most incredible work out there. Right. Um, and, and even like, um, anyway, so, so there are definitely a lot of medical doctors out there for the bioregulators. You can take a more self-directed approach. There are an increasing number of medical doctors again, who are working with bioregulators, but because the bioregulators are so, they're so much safer, I'm more, I mean, I definitely will coach people in how to use bioregulators. I will guide people on peptide use, but if they have a complex medical condition, I'm going to help them to find a medical doctor. Like, mm -hmm. let's be clear. There are a lot of health coaches out there. There are a lot of yahoos who run around saying, oh, I can deal with it. Don't worry. Come to me. And I'm sitting there going, you know what? You want, you need to have respect for the human body and respect for complex illnesses that need a much different approach. Um, if you want to educate yourself on the basics of peptides, I do have a peptide crash course that is 
you know, I gift people when they become an annual member of the BSP community. It will eventually be available for sale. I just have a few boxes to check before I can make that available to the world. But to be honest, to be an annual member of BSP is $164. And when this course hits the world, it's going to be in the $150 to $200 range. So for my money, I'd be joining the community. But, you know, who am I to tell people what to do? You're actually right. It is. And it's such a great community. I have to say, I, I, people are, are, are active. They're smart and they're, they, it's really amazing what you share and you share, you share a lot of stuff other than peptides too. I think it's, yeah. it's really quite fascinating. And I, I, I encourage people to go and become a member. You can go in month to month, but, but if you're interested in that peptide course, like you said, it makes sense. Just, you know, you get, imagine getting your peptide course with the community added on to it as, mm -hmm. as, like that. So uh, when it's is that? Very, it's a very different community than, than Facebook. I mean, I love my Facebook community for a lot of the different reasons. I'm not in there as much as I used to be anymore. The Mighty Networks community is much more intimate. It's smaller, but we also get the opportunity to offer people, um, like with Dr. Diane Goodenow, we offered people the opportunity to participate in a 30-day brain reset using plasmologins. We tested their plasmologin levels before they started. We tested again at the end. Then Dr. Goodenow reviewed all of everybody's results at the end. It was really an incredible experience for people. And so I'm planning another one with another, actually I'm planning two more different types of, of N of one, if you will, experiments that people, people can participate in, in that community. And they, they buy in, like we can't do it for free necessarily. And I'm not, not charging for my time, but you know, there's a cost for supplements and whatever, but there's, there's a guidance and there's an opportunity to say, okay, how is my body going to respond to this? So cool. So we'll have links to those, um, to the program and to the VIP group in the show notes. But if you can't wait, go to Nat Nidham, N A T N I D D A M dot com. Now, one, I know you are a, a fan of spermidine like I am. <laughs> Just mm -hmm. talk about that for a second. It's not a peptide, but nope. tell me why you like spermidine. Um, well, I like spermidine because, because it's not a peptide, because it is able to address a lot of those foundational and under the hood issues that are, that we experience at a cellular level as we age, which we refer to as the hallmarks of aging. And when you can find a compound that addresses nine of 12 hallmarks of aging, you're kind of onto something, right? So it's it's kind of like the Swiss Army knife. Like it 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 regulates autophagy. It helps with mitophagy. It helps with all the autophagies, right? There's there's your body has, and, and your body has the ability to clear out um, bad like used up or defective materials. It helps with proteins that become misfolded. So it, it's a chaperone. It helps to regulate the folding of those proteins. It helps to protect DNA. Like, so it does so many of those things that actually have to be in place so that, for example, bioregulators can do their thing, so that we can age well, so that our bodies continue to function at a cellular level. And then you're also, you know, the other nice thing about spermidine is you get to see the results. You get results with your hair, your skin, your nails. Deep sleep gets better. So it's kind of, it's a bit of a one-stop shop, right? It's just, it's an easy hit to hit a lot of different marks. Yeah. And there's a lot of stuff that goes on under the hood that we don't really know. I mean, that we do see some results in better sleep or better HRV scores, or some people have gray hair reversal, other people, their eyelashes are growing longer. Everybody has some, something going on, but it is, I, I'm much more convinced just by what the research is showing and what's going on under the hood mm -hmm. that makes me take it every single day. So um, I, you, I know you and I are both fans of primidine. That's the only one I take. Um, seems like it's Thanks. so much better than anything else, but um, okay. The, the next thing I want to move on to is you just got back from Dave Asprey's biohacking conference in Florida. Tell us one thing that you learned from that event or what's the big takeaway? Oh boy. Um, that's a tough question. It's a good question. It's a tough question. Let me think about that. Um, 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 um. I'll tell you that one of the, well, 
one of the th trends I'm seeing in this space is energetics. Um, and it's been going on for a long time with PEMF uh, therapy and that kind of stuff. And there's a, um, there's a new device called, I keep forgetting the name of it. Um, now, the main, it's a little bit like the biocharger. I don't know if you know the biocharger, which is, you know, it's, they call it the campfire. It's this big globe that glows and it emits very powerful pulse electromagnetic frequencies. Um, and they have different programs to address different issues. This thing is called, okay, I have to look at my phone. I apologize. Just yeah, no, we, we'll just edit this part out <laughs> yeah. so that people don't have to wait. Go yeah, find no, it. It's, it is. Did you test it out? I did. I got was, to do. It's not the one. It's that, that bed that had the, the infrared light and everybody's been posting about it. And it looks like yeah. a chamber. It's like the, the longevity bed or something. That... So there's, so there's a couple of different, um, a mortal. That's what it's a called. mortal. A mortal was <laughs> a M M O R T A L. And so they have two devices, the, the bed, which is, which is all, it has the red light. It has the pulse electromagnetic frequencies. It's got vibration. It's got sound. It's got all the things that's like $150,000 problem. But then they've got like a little, it's like a handheld globe. And I'm trying to remember the name of it. seeing it I can look it up for you but basically it's you hold this glass globe you've got your feet on a on a on a mat that's like a PMF mat you literally feel the current running from your hands to your feet through your body um it was pretty cool how long do you sit in there uh so you're you're just sitting outside and so I think you sit with it for about I want I think a full session is maybe 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. Um, but I can show you what it looks like if you want. want Do you, I don't know if you if you can see uh, it's on blur. How about now? Can you see that? No, that's not that's not it. No, it's a bit too small. Well, really? that's that's the globe. That's the small oh, one. That's the globe. Sorry, I, was, I thought yeah, it was that's the globe. Uh the big one. Wait for it. Is so they basically, they travel around in this jet stream, like the trailer. Yeah. And it's inside the trailer. And so they've set up the trailer. Like mm. that's the inside of the trailer. For you guys who are listening. Yeah. It, it looks like. Uh, now we're getting to the bed. There's Japanese the bed. capsule hotel. And then you get to this. This is a back to the future trailer. It literally back to the future trailer. And then they leave you in there and you take off all your clothes. And of course, all the fancy influencers got into their little teeny tiny bikinis and did, did it out in public kind of thing. Um, <laughs> but um, it's, it's, I mean, it was really, it was kind of the cool out there, out there thing. The other, the other technology that I came across that I was really impressed with, it, which I came across at KetoCon, like I've seen them now at a couple of different um events is a something called a flow presso which is a lymphatic drainage system and basically they wrap you from your toes all the way up your legs all the way around your trunk both arms with sleeves and it milks your body mm. so imagine the pressure coming up from the toes all the way up the legs then it does the torso and then from the tips from the tips of your hands all the way up. And so it literally moves the lymph in a, in a sequential way through the body. Do you feel it's, anything? You mean you feel the difference? Oh, and there's infrared, there's infrared heat in it, warmth. Um, you come out of that thing, A, you have to run to the bathroom. B, <laughs> you feel, oh, oh, and they put headphones on you and you listen to beautiful music and you block your eyes. It feels like you've just gotten the most unbelievable full body hug ever um wow. the woman who is marketing it desiree de strong um works with a lot of people who suffer from ptsd and children who like she worked with the children in an orphanage and there was one little boy they put in that thing and he came out and he said you know my mommy and my daddy died however many years ago and this is the first time i've been hugged since then 
Aww. and the room melts, right? Like <laughs> autistic children, they put them in there and they don't want to get out. Amazing. So there's this, there's this, there's this incredible physiological benefit, but from an emotional benefit for people with BTSD and all that, there's this incredible sensory thing that happens that just is, I, I don't know, like it's really hard to explain. You know, if, so I wonder if they measure your oxytocin, I bet that's going through the roof. Oh my God, your oxytocin would go right through the roof, right? <laughs> and comparatively for bang for your buck, I mean, they don't sell them typically to consumers. So if you're listening to this and you're like, I need that in my life, you need to go find a clinic who wants to order it. And it's not a very big investment for what it is, right? It's about, I think it's about 8,500 bucks, which is a lot of money on the one hand, but on the other hand, if you're a clinic that's doing any kind of work, like I introduced two different doctors to it, they bought it on the spot for their clinics wow. because they could see that I had a woman who actually came up to me at the beginning of the conference who I'd never met, who listens to the podcast and has really serious lymphedema. I took her to that booth. You couldn't get her out. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Interesting. Somebody yeah, just asked in our group about lymphedema and um, I'll have to go back to her and answer yeah. with that. So before we wrap up, I, I want to talk a little bit about your upcoming Women's Longevity and Resilience Retreat in November. It's mm -hmm. your third one, and I know it's super popular and it gets filled up quickly. I don't even know if you have any spaces left, but just if you don't, few. there's yeah, a few. No, okay. We just have a few left. Let's tell the audience what they get. What is this all about? Yeah, so this is... This is basically, um, I co-host it with a woman by the name of Dasha Maximov, and her zone of genius is kind of resilience and brain health. My zone of genius is all the, you know, like the biohacking, the peptides, the longevity, that kind of stuff. And it's an opportunity to spend five days just in a combination of nature. So, you know, we're right on the beach. So we start every morning with sunrise walks on the beach. We do yoga outside with a beautiful yoga instructor. Everybody gets um, at least two body treatments or they get two body treatments included with their um, with with the retreat. We have a private chef that cooks all of our food, which is, of course, meticulously planned by both Dasha and I. Um, and then we do sessions during the days where we talk about through the lens of longevity and resilience, we talk about food, we talk about supplementation, we talk about all the biohacking tools that are out there. And we have a lot of biohacking tools on site. So people can try all different things, like whether it's Apollo or Sensate or Katsu, or um, we've got a sauna, we've got PMF mat, like we've got all the toys laid out for people to try. But then we do all of these interactive sessions around different topics that you know, women just want to know. And so I'll present, Dasha will do a presentation, but really it's a dialogue because what's interesting about these retreats, now we're learning after, you know, now planning our third one, we get a lot of lay people who come, people who just listen to the podcast. But interestingly enough, we also in, attract a lot of practitioners. And so it ends up being this really interesting round table. And to be honest, every single person has experience and something to bring to the table. And I think one of the things that that we hear over and over again from the women we speak to is they are looking for community. They're looking to connect with other women who don't think that they're completely insane, um, which most of their friends and family think that they're completely insane. And so, as a matter of fact, at Dave Asprey's conference of the 10 women that came to our last um, retreat, eight of them were there. And they got together and they had dinner and they got, they went out and did stuff like we, we had drinks together. Like it was amazing. So these, we, these groups of women become their own little pods, right? Um, we also run genetics and biological age tests before the retreat. And they, they get to sit down with me for like an hour, an hour and a half. And we go over the results and we talk about what are some of the steps they can take towards moving towards their goals based on that information. And then we do two follow-up Zoom calls after the retreat. So, you know, lots, lots of, I think I, there's probably more, but you get there the is, idea. Yeah, there is, and I think everybody could find it. I'll have a link as well to your website where they can find more about the retreat, the dates and the price. Uh, what else do we need to know? So the dates are November 1st to 6th. It's happening in Cabarete, which on, is on the Northeast shore of the Dominican Republic. 
Um, if you go to my website, um, you can book a call with me and, and or some, Dasha's not always to, able to make it. You book a call with me and we see if, you know, what your questions are, if it's a fit for you. Um, and then in terms of the price, it's around $5,200, depending on your room and what you choose. And that includes literally everything except for your flights. All you have to do is get yourself there. Okay. So actually it's wonderful that uh, people can get a chance to talk to you first and that yeah, you're- It's hard to make a decision on something like this without a connection, right? Yeah, of course. And and also you need to, uh, yeah, and, yeah be, be brutally honest with people too, if this is right for them or not. And I think mm -hmm. that's a really important point. And I, I, um, I'm, I'm glad you do that. You kind of screen for people too. And it's important. When they screen us, it's, it's, yeah. a, it has to be a mutual fit, right? Yes. Energetically, it's got to be the, the, the women who come are every one of them is united by this curiosity. Um, they just want to know, right. And they want to experience and they're willing to make changes in their lives and they want to make changes in their lives. So this isn't going to be the retreat with the champagne and the bubble bath. Like that's not, you know, that's not the scene. It's more likely to be the deliberate cold exposure, like a little bit of an ice bath with a great dinner afterwards. <laughs> it's, you know, it's a different, different vibe. So you have to be open and willing to experience that and what it can bring to you. So we've had women who went out after the retreat and bought their own ice pl cold plunge. <laughs> Ups, right yeah. and others who are like i'm really glad i did it and i'm never doing that again so it's okay <laughs> you know everybody gets to live their experience but it's a very hands-on experiential five days very cool so i hope uh I can make it myself one time. I'm, I'm, I'm there. I'm on the list of, it's on my list of things to do. I hear so many great things about it. And I encourage everyone to at least uh, have a call with, with Natalie and, and, uh, and see if this is the right fit for you. Now, everyone can find you on Instagram, Facebook. I'll have links to all that, Uh the, the podcast, Superhuman Performance Podcast, the, really, um, the Biohacking Superhuman Performance. Biohacking, I'm getting them all mixed up. Biohacking Superhuman Performance is the podcast. And any anything anywhere else you'd like people to go and find you for more information? No, I think, you know, the website is kind of central, right? So natnidham.com is where you'll find information about the retreat, information about the bio, uh, the Mighty Networks group. There's, so, I, you know, it's all there. Great. Any last words for a woman going through menopause? You know, I think that the narrative that you're going through menopause, it's going to be hard. You're just going to have to grin and bear it is thankfully starting to fade. I think that if you're willing to make some changes and look for the right practitioner, there are a lot of really good practitioners out there, but a practitioner is a little bit like the right therapist. It has to be someone who you resonate with who is willing to listen to you and who is curious enough not to say, well, this should work. And if it doesn't work for you, there's something wrong with you, but who's willing to say, hmm, this isn't working for you. Okay, let's look for something else. So remain curious, educate yourself and find that practitioner who's going to be your partner because this is, this, this is the name of the game now, right? We are engaged in our own healthcare. Hopefully, you know, we are now in a generation where we believe that we can play an active role in our health and we have to be empowered to to do that. Like I, I, I speak to people every day, unfortunately, who still have this mindset and, and I understand why, but they have a mindset of you're going, I want you to fix me. And the reality is we cannot fix anyone. It is the power is in your hands. We are all here as guides and as people to help to curate everything that's out there and help you to find your way. Make sure your hormones are balanced. Make sure you're sleeping. Make sure you're eating the right diet. You know, consider releasing wine as the thing that's going to fix you and as your medicine, just let it go, right? There are so many other things that are available to us now. Um, that can help us to feel better without damaging our bodies. 
So great words of advice. Um, thank you so much, Natalie, for your time, your expertise, your wisdom. I, I'm so grateful to be one of your friends and, or call you one of my friends. And I, I can't wait to see you again in person and, uh, and hopefully we'll have another, another discussion, another podcast. I could keep going on and on with podcasts with you because there's always something to learn. So have a wonderful day, a good, good day where you are and a good night, good evening, where you, where everyone else is. So have a wonderful time. <laughs> Thank you so much, Zora. It's always such a pleasure. And I too cannot wait to see you in person again.